Hey, this is Scott and it's New Whiskey Wednesday. Today we're going to go ahead and finish up with the Westland line. First we started with Gariana, then we went ahead to the Sherried, then we went ahead to the Standard American Single Malt, and today out of that box that I showed you in the very first video, which was their sampler pack, we're going to finish with Westland's Peated American Single Malt Whiskey. Stay tuned. All right, you are tuned into the Rookie Wine and Whiskey Enthusiast. And as I said in the intro, we're gonna go ahead and finish up with the Westland line. There we go. Now, this particular single malt has almost the exact same mash bill for malts, and obviously it's all single malt, with the exception of one additional malt. Now, Westland, I believe it's, they get their peated malted barley from the same uh, person or the same company out of Isla in Scotland where Brooklotti gets their peated single malts. So this, other with the exception of it being peated, it should be very similar to the, uh, uh, to the previous American single malt. Let's go ahead and give this a pour. Now, again, it is aged for a minimum of 36 months, so it's three years old. Uh, it's aged in both brand new Cooper's Select and Cooper's Reserve New American Oak and First Fill American Bourbon Oak. So let's go ahead and take a nose. I'll go ahead and take a look at the color on this. Again, very deep amber, long legs on this. Oh, there's a smudge on the outside of my glass. Hmm. All right. First thing I get is a rich peat note. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I first had this single malt several years ago, I really was not a fan. And now I'm a peat guy. When it comes to peat, I've got Crag and More 12, which is uh, lightly peated and on the finish. I also have Ardbeg, uh, 10-year, uh, the Dark Cove, Dark Cove Committee release. I'm a pretty much a fan of the of the Ardbeg, but I'm also not a fan of a more medicinal style of peat, similar to what uh, Laphroaig has. But this one here, when I first tasted it and first smelled it years ago, it kind of gave off a bitter note, and I've really been avoiding it up until this particular review. So let's go ahead and see how my palate has changed. Now, this does very much smell very peated. Now, it's not as heavily peated as an Arbeg. Um, so if you're thinking that, oh my God, this is going to be overwhelming, it is not. Matter of fact, I know a lot of people that would be introduced to this and as a good introduction to a peated style of whiskey. Right again on the nose, I'm getting that banana, banana nut nose on it. But again, it's that peat is really kind of up forward and front and center to this. A little bit of toasted walnuts. And I believe a little bit of vanilla and that would be that would come from the ex bourbon and the uh, new american oak. Yeah, there's definitely that vanilla note that's sitting right behind the peat. Now, as I said, this is this is not a single malt or whiskey for everybody. Let's go ahead and take a sip. Now, this sits at 46% alcohol by volume or 92 proof and it was also aged out at their Hoquiam facility out in Hoquiam, Washington. Mm. The peat hits you but it's like a half a second delayed now, when I like I said when I first tasted this, 
I got an extreme bitter note, which I'm not getting at the moment. It sort of wants to come through, but the rest of the flavors have really married together. Again, the the the, the things that I got on the nose, the toasted walnut, the banana, banana bread, um, the creme brulee, the uh, uh, kind of a almost a burnt banana no, uh, taste to it now. Think of uh, what's the best way I can describe this this uh, peat. It's not ashy. Um, it's not even really a, of a campfire. Think of think of a char on a piece of meat that has been on too long. Maybe uh, maybe a piece of meat that fell into the charcoal. Uh, that's it. It's more along the lines. It's almost ashy, but it's not. It, it's that. Uh, it's that steak, it's that uh, chicken that has fallen off the grill into the charcoal ashes a little bit, and you kind of brush it off. It's, it's almost that style of smoky peat, peat uh, note to it, but that vanilla is ever is ever present. I mean, that's the, the new American oak that's come through with the, the ex-bourbon. There is a little bit of sweetness now towards the finish. Um, the finish on this is relatively long. It's actually, I think, a little bit longer than the American single malt. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes me want to go ahead and sip another. Now, what I like to do, just as I'm making these faces, I like to swish the, the whiskey around in my mouth. Oh yeah, yeah that that toasted walnut really comes through right now. It's almost like a nutty, nutty coffee note, um, similar to a. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the the, uh, the country that has a really nutty coffee. I want to say it's uh, Peru. No, Malaysia. I've had some Malaysian coffees that are extremely nutty. Um, the vanilla, the banana, the banana bread, the uh, creme brulee. It's all right there. Now, there is, there it is right there, a little bit of bitterness. Um, and that might be the oaky bitterness that's trying to come through. But everything is relatively well balanced. Again, this is a non-offensive style of petered whiskey. And if you are interested in getting into petered whiskeys, and, but you don't want to go jump full force into uh, Scotch-style whiskeys, uh, or the, Scotch, uh, the Isla whiskeys, or the Island whiskeys, um, like Talisker or Highland Park, this is a good introduction. And like I said, most uh, of your big box retail outlets will have the sample pack for this. Um, if it is nationwide, what am I going to go ahead and rate this? I still prefer the standard American single malt. Um, if I were to rank them, and I should have had all three bottles out here and I didn't, I would probably still rank this one between the American, the Sherry, and this one here, I would probably rank this one third, um, just because I am so used to that savory peat note that Ardbeg provides that this is just a little too different. Now, my palate will continue to evolve and change, um, but for a score, I'm probably, it's definitely the high 80s. I would say probably an 87 or an 88 for this particular bottle. Um, you can't go wrong with it, and I have some friends that uh, I will probably be happy to pour this for and see what they think. So, anyways, that being said, have you had the peated single malt from Westland, the American uh, style single malt? Uh, if you have, let me know what you think below. Do you think my tasting notes are completely off or are they spot on? Put those comments down below. I do try to respond to every single comment uh, in all of my threads. The other thing is, is if you like this content, please hit the thumbs up button. The algorithms will then do their little magical numbers thing and put this video out there. When people do a search for Westland, show them that there's other reviews out there other than the big channels. The other thing is, is go ahead. If you like this channel as the Rookie Wine and Whiskey Enthusiast, which again is 
primarily Washington State based wine, Washington State based wines and spirits, but not exclusively. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And when you do hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell icon that pops up right next to it. That way, when I do upload these particular videos, if you like them, you're going to be one of the first notified. So, anyways, let me know what you guys think. As always, Westland, you produce a great product. Um, thank you very much for putting this out there. And as always, please drink responsibly. Life is too short for either bad wine or bad whiskey. Salam. I wonder what would happen if I blended the sherry. Okay, yep, a little bit of extras here. I have my peated, still have a little bit left in here. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of the sherry wood. Probably just maybe a quarter ounce, right about there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, this is a little bit of extra. Mm. Oh, it's completely changed the nose. The peat forwardness is gone. It's there, but it's much more muted. And now I'm getting a pl peated plum. Hmm. Hmm. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to try that. That peated plum note the vanilla has been muted, but the sherry dryness, the, the raisins, the potpourri married perfectly well with the peat on that. And wow. Lesson learned, folks. Don't be afraid to experiment. This was kind of a last minute, I wonder what if. So anyways, again... Life is too short for the bad wine or bad whiskey. I just blended a really good blend. Cheers. Cheers again.